I may need to try to bail on this road over here. Let's switch into sport. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the DJI Avata. Gonna go for a range test today with this bad boy. We're gonna be using the motion controller. I got the kit that comes with the motion controller and the DJI 2 goggles. If you missed the initial unboxing and flight test, kind of made them flight test, uh, go ahead and check that out. It'll pop up here, the link to that video, and you can kind of see more in depth on how this thing kind of flies. Probably not gonna get as much distance as the other controller. I do have the um, FPV controller, so I'm gonna be linking that up to this as well. And we'll try to do that range test and some flying in a different video. So we're just gonna focus on going straight to those mountains in the distance with this controller pointed straight at it and let's see how far we can get um, who knows hopefully we have enough power to get back it's been a little bit breezy today it's like super calm right now but then the breeze will just come up all of a sudden so hopefully it's not too much of a nail biter but maybe it will be anyway let's get started with the avata range test Let's go ahead and start ASAP. Motor starting and press and hold to take off. There we go. Immediately full speed ahead in normal mode, okay? So hopefully everything's recording for you guys. And I'm just gonna be holding my arm out like this leaning up against my patio wall and just going straight out here okay we're gonna leave it in in normal mode for this um flight okay guys see how i'm just going straight towards uh those mountains right there so i'm gonna leave it in normal mode only because let's go a little bit higher let's go to about 100 feet Drops down a little bit there. I don't want to get too high because the wind's going to start probably coming up over there a bit. Um, so what I was saying was we're going to leave it in normal mode. It maxes out at about 17, 18 miles per hour in normal mode, okay? And um, that is the safest way to do a range test. And... We might do a sport range test um, after this, but I think it's coming back at this speed anyway. Uh, you know what I mean? So I want to be pointing my controller and my goggles as direct towards those two mountain peaks as I can, because that's exactly where I'm headed, right? Um, so I'm just trying to steer it right towards those mountain peaks okay and i'm not expecting this thing to fly for very long or like a huge amount of time um if you've seen the initial flight test i did kind of just like going around my house and stuff uh you know i have the flight times up on that video but this is like only the second charge on the battery remember so I usually like to do my flight tests, you know, in the series after I do the unboxing and then after I do um, the initial maiden flight test and stuff like that. But that doesn't really give it a chance to use, um, cycle the batteries. And you usually want to do, usually around 10 times of a battery cycle is when you get the optimal battery capacity. So this is like only the second or third time, but wow, if we're at 80% and I'm just full trigger, full throttle forward, I'll have everything up on the screen so you guys can see what my goggles look like. Perfectly clear right now. I have them all in auto focus mode and auto um, bandwidth mode. You know what I mean? So it's just gonna, the megabits per second you see on the bottom right there and I think it's auto power mode as well. So it's gonna increase the power on the goggles as it gets farther away and needs to um, give it a little more power, right? Hopefully, 
automatically because I didn't actually see any power settings on these goggles. I remember on the FPV goggles you could cycle between 25 milliwatt and 700 and then when you have the if you just modified it you actually could do whoa looks like the wind is blowing it to the left a little maybe that was weird maybe that was just a glitch you saw how it started to turn and then i kind of rotated the controller just a tad and it kicked back straight and level maybe a breeze or something or a glitch who knows Anyway, it's at 30 megabits per second, and we'll probably notice that go down lower and lower as we get farther away. We're at 70% power, so we used 10% um, power just in like, it seemed like a minute of flight. Again, full throttle forward in normal mode, aiming at those mountains. Seems to be going up slightly, you know? And I'm not really used to this drone yet, so I don't know if I want to really push it that far. Seems like it's beginning to be harder to see those that peak out there, just because that um, mountain in the foreground is kind of blocking it. But my height from my launch point, you can see it's slowly going up, 160, 61 feet. That's definitely not the height of the ground where it's at going to be a little bit different over there so you see that tree sticking up way in the distance i guess i'm aiming for that one because i can't even see those peaks anymore which is interesting curvature of the earth who knows this over here if you look to your left is some kind of quarry kind of neat kind of like a rock quarry um yeah so we're using quite a bit of power here flying this little thing but we have a, a great path here doing great just over the pine trees you can see how the signal the HD signal on my goggles is down to three bars from four RC signal is still maxed out at four that's great you guys look to the bottom right of the screen 25 satellites 96 percent power on my goggles um, I don't see any power on my controller, the motion controller. Well, that's kind of weird how the, um, the goggle home point is going all over the place. <laughs> kind of funny, isn't it? All right, let's keep in a straight line here as much as possible. So I'm going up in height, but wow, look at this. We're getting closer. Oh, there's a bird straight up flying over. That was neat. Again, the goggles are perfectly clear still. We're down to two bars in the goggles. Let me see if I just kind of adjust them slightly. Yeah, I'm just pick my head up just a tad. Low battery, lock button to cancel. All right, I hit the lock button. Uh, yeah, that canceled it. So I'm still, I'm going to go to 50%, guys. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn around, okay? So we've been flying for uh, how many minutes? About seven minutes, eight minutes. Let's turn around. So a nice, easy turnaround. Check this out. There's my home point. Awesome, huh? So we turned her out in just about 49%. And, uh, uh oh, I hope we're not going to lose this thing. I may need to find a, a bailout location, hopefully near a highway. Uh, you know, I don't want to be going up in altitude, that's for sure. So this is kind of weird. I don't know if that's the wind or what, but can you see that? Every once in a while it gets crooked for a while and then it kind of levels out. I really am not sure if that's the wind or what's going on. Okay, that's the battery time left on the flight. You see that eight minutes, six seconds near the battery. Battery's 43%. There's another bird there, it looks like a raven. Um, so pretty dang far ways away. Are there more birds? I see a bird 
right where I'm going to. Looks like I'm kind of going to the right, so maybe there is some gnarly cross breeze here. I wonder if we'll be attacked by a bird. So you see that? That wasn't me like turning it. That must be some gusts of wind. Boy, yeah, it's really um, adjusting its timing versus how the wind's blowing. So you see that? It was down to five minutes something for a second there. Because it looked like it was fully fighting some wind. Anyway, I forgot even to look at the distance, guys. But I'll have that popped up when we turned around. You see that on the left-hand side right now? It's 8,000 feet about. Um, six minutes left of flight time. I definitely don't want to keep going up in altitude and wasting battery. So I'm trying to keep it as level as possible. It is nice to have a little bit of buffer. Um, this thing does at around 10%. Well, look at this wind buffeting. At around 10%, the drone will start to do an auto landing, but you can still power through it. Is that wind blowing it sideways? Do you see this? If I yank to the left, yeah, high wind velocity. See on the bottom right there, so that's wind nailing it from the right. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to make this, dude. We got four minutes left to fly, and we're ten minutes on our flight test, and over a mile still to come back. Well, let's cross our fingers. I don't know why I'm pulling the trigger so hard. <laughs> I'm like stressing out and pulling this trigger as like hard as I can where it doesn't need to be pulled that hard. But I'm just trying to keep that home point. We're not doing like a automated return to home in this one. I'm thinking that maybe um, we could save a little more power letting the computer not have to calculate. Yeah, I'm trying to hold it as still as possible and that seems like some wind hitting it from the right side. Throughout the flight also, keep an eye on that um, mile per hour and that'll tell you if there's wind coming from the front or the back. You know, if, if it kind of goes down in its mile per hour, its speed. Um, it might just really be uh, hitting it hard in the, from the front. Wind velocity went away. All right, well, there's the highway, so it looks like we might just make this. I almost want to put it in sport and just haul butt back. But that's I think that's going to really drop it. High wind velocity again. To tell you the truth, my finger's getting kind of sore pulling that trigger so hard. i got to let off a little, relax it. I'm just holding this reticle right over the H. Okay, here we go. I think I'm gonna try to switch into sport. Am I? No, because it's gonna go down anyway once it reach. Jeez, you see this? Critical low battery, it wants to land. Man, okay, I just gotta get. Is it giving me any speed? It cut my speed. Holy smokes. It took away my reticle. It cut my speed down to 10 miles per hour. Oh. I may need to try to bail on this road over here. Let's switch into sport. All right. Control. Aircraft horizontally to avoid obstacles. All right. You see that road? That's my road. I'm going to try to land as close as possible. Not quite making it home, guys. Probably because there was some wind. I just hope this thing doesn't want to drop out of the sky. So you see this vacant land here? I'm going to try to land it 
right over here on the side of the road. My house is way up there. 1% battery power. Uh, yeah, we'll just come in to this kind of vacant land. Could I keep going even? I might just try to keep going along the road. Battery too low landing. Is it letting me go any higher? It's still letting me go up. That's amazing. I'd imagine it's going to reach a point where it's not going to let me control it anymore. I've been 0% for a while. Let's see if this thing drops out of the sky or what. Full throttle and I'm only going three miles per hour. Yeah, it does not let want to let me go any further forward. So I'm going to land it right in here, guys. See this? Nice and easy, nice and easy, letting off. I think that was a pretty, a pretty nice spot in there. Yeah, it's right, it's right by a yucca plant. <laughs> you see that garbly goop in the screen? Hopefully you can see that. Just land, dude. Just land. That was a bit of a uh, nail biter, don't you think? So, holy smokes. Let me go get this thing. I may, I may go ahead and attach my cell phone, plug it into the goggles and use that DJI Fly app. You know what I mean? You can just plug it into the goggles and you can find your drone that way. So I think I'm going to try to do that and hopefully we can recover this thing. Taking the old electric chopper out today to find the Avata drone. This is a great little chopper. I did a review on it if you guys wanted to check it out. It's on my channel, but I'm going to use this bad boy to locate the drone. It wasn't like immediately finding the drone from today's flight. So I had to power everything off, turn everything back on. Then remember how I connect your phone to the uh, goggles in my... Initial review, you can do that. And what it does is it just immediately downloads the information on where the last known position of your drone is. Let's just try use other maps. There we go, Google Maps. Right over here, I think Google should tell me pretty soon my destination's on the right. Your destination is on the right. Yep, let me park on the side over here. Let's see where we're at. Well, it's good to have electric bikes around for a quick and easy and uh, incognito rescue mission. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to DJI Fly and um, just use the actual map here to uh, show me where it is. So it looks like it's a little further this way. I'm going to take these keys just in case somebody wants to steal my bike. That'll let me know somebody's messing with it. All right, here we go, guys. Farther away than I thought it would be. Looks like I'm on somebody's property. Gotta be very quiet. There it is, right there. I guess that wasn't a yucca plant. I don't know why I thought that I was landing next to a yucca plant. It flipped over. Yeah, anyways, here it is. That was interesting. Yeah, it's a little bit. I wonder if something tried to attack it. Anyway, let's get off of this property. A little dirty on the top, but no scratching, just regular dirt marks, you know? What a great feature of the the um, DJI Find My Drone. So really, um, it looks fine. It looks like it didn't really hit anything with the propellers. Just overall, a little bit of dirt from flipping over. I'm not sure why it flipped over. But maybe, you know, when it gets super low, it's just trying to look for a place to land and you know how DJI has these sensors, so if there's an obstacle, it thinks it's just going to try to like sit there and maybe it just started to wander 
and I think probably caught a foot and flipped over and then killed the battery because it was so low. So this battery is literally, it's flashing on one. So I want to charge this ASAP. So I'm just going to unplug it right now and take this bad boy back with me. And then let's go ahead and do a pros and cons once we get back to the house, okay? All right, guys, back at range test, Avada range test base. So it looks like you're maybe gonna get around two miles. It looks like that's maybe gonna be the max you're gonna get. Now I was in normal mode, so I'm not sure how it's gonna perform in sport mode, but I do wanna try it since I do have kind of a good bail scenario if I need to bail it. There's this road that comes up in the mountains that I can just kind of bail on, which was super successful. And kudos to DJI's uh, Find My Drone. This just worked phenomenally. Uh, remember, just absolutely just perfectly. I mean, it gets you within five, 10 feet of the drone. And really all you got to remember to do is when you lose your drone and you have a setup like this, just shut the goggles down, shut your controller down, uh, reboot it up, then go into the DJI Fly app and then plug your phone or your tablet into your goggles and then go into your account and find my drone. Okay. And it seems like it needs a shutdown and a, a kind of a restart with everything for it to reload the data. This guy, little guy is going to be a battery hog. So you saw that thing going out. I mean, I was in normal mode and it was just eating uh, battery power. Like it seemed like 10% every 30 seconds or so around there. And I mean, I was just in normal mode. Sport mode is going to make it tilt harder for flying forward, right? As far as the control and video, it did not skip a beat. Maybe when it turned around for a second there, it had a little skip in the video. I, I remember it getting a little bit garbly for a second. And the goggles, of course, as long as you have the antennas flipped up, they're kind of shaped to just point straight at the drone, right? So you just want to face the drone. If you look at the DJI um, FPV goggle signal, the HD signal, the video, it was always lower than the controller. So with line of sight, the controller has no problem that far out as far as this drone can fly. This was starting to get a little bit low, but still perfectly clear in the video. I've had all that up on the screen so you guys could see the full um, you know, range test and what was going on. If you remember my, I think I mentioned it, my original FPV, DJ FPV drone video, I tried recording my goggles and they had no telemetry on that. So I'm glad that they, went ahead and updated to have telemetry on your recording because that's just great to show what's going on on the screen to viewers, you know what I mean? This is how much battery was used on the um, goggles. We still have probably about, I wanna say 90%. 90 so barely used anything, maybe 80, 90% on that. And then the power it used on the actual uh, motion controller was next to nothing. It doesn't even have a light blinking. And the drone, I mean, I got to charge that battery. It's still sitting there at 0%, but that was pretty phenomenal how far it could fly at 0%. And I think what happens is once it gets to 0%, DJI is pretty good at watch checking its own voltage. And then once it like absolutely does not want you to fly anymore with uh, possibility of damaging the battery on its voltage, then it just, remember, it wouldn't let me fly really any more forward. It was just like letting me creep super slow a couple miles per hour to find a spot, but it was just going down. Great that I could still look down, find a place to land. When I picked it up, it was flipped over, and I think it was because it was just drifting and probably caught. But I have yet to test the turtle mode, so I want to test that on another flight and do some more aggressive flying. But if you miss the uh, initial maiden flight review guys go ahead and check it down in the link down below in the description because i was kind of like flying through trying to get some cool cinematic of these trees and with this motion controller it's just a really neat experience you know it's just like really intuitive and natural to just fly in the direction your hands kind of moving real fun kind of like how the um initial fpv drone was from dji but this one's just so much smaller and you just feel more confident going in tighter spaces because it has these robust propeller guards and it's not like this big old heavy honking thing like the other drone was it's still heavy like on the ride back i had no place on my bike to put it it can't fit in my pocket so i had to actually put it in my um, lap like this and kind of cradle it while i was riding the bike so i need to get maybe some saddlebags on the sides of my bike for 
for drone search and rescues. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that um, range test on the Avada. That was really fun for me. I hope it was for you too. And don't forget down in the description, links to where you can get the Avada and also the equipment I use in my videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.